now it is time for us to to start um, good morning uh, maybe before we pray let me try and explain who is this person in front of you uh, my name is Tamsa Shange uh, presently presently looking after the old food chapel um, yeah, because I belong to the Anglican Church by origin, well, Tamsanga had to be shortened for the English brethren to be able to call me. So it was shortened and amputated to Tami. So you know, now that means it's easy to, uh, to remember. Um, yeah, uh, my mother, in fact, is a Mrs. Susan. Lin Holum, uh, who was lecturer in the at Howard College, uh, I'm darker than all of of her uh, children. 
reason, reason being, she kept me longer in the oven when she took the others out. Yes, and uh, yes, uh, let us pray. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace to bring before you with one accord our common supplication. And you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fulfillment and the fullness of eternal life. Be present with us, O oh Lord, as we deliberate on your word and pray for the cause of the soul of your servant, Mark. God our Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, died and rose again for our salvation. We entrust you to you, the soul of your servant, Mark, praying that he and all the faithful departed may be revealed as your children when Christ shall come again, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, Secondly, um, I want to welcome everybody here on behalf of the family. Uh, the family, uh, we first of all, our condolences to you. And we welcome people who have come from far and from wide and all over. In fact, all over the world, it seems like, uh, which shows a, a very devoted friendship which you all had with Mark and, and his family. Yes, your presence here is highly appreciated. And I, I welcome everybody with all protocol observed, observed. And I know there are those that were very closely linked with him and who are also suffering as a, as a family does. Be consoled as we are going on with this service. I must confess, it wasn't easy for me to, to come and stand here because of the kind of man Mark has been to his family. So the, they are missing a lot of things that he used to be to them. A loving father, a loving mother, a, a provider. And I mean, in fact, exactly what God wanted a man to be, that what he was to his his wife and, 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 and children. And so to lose that kind of a person, it's a terrible experience. At the same time, um, I must say to all his children, I call it it's a, an expensive blessing to bury a parent because that's what it's meant to be. These days, it's the other way around, which is haunting to the parents to bury their children and live and be left alone in, 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 in this world, which is now the, what is the most common uh, these, these days. It, it is a very terrible experience. Much as it is painful to bury a parent, but say to God, thank you for the opportunity to fulfill, to fulfill what you, you wanted us to do about our parents. Yes, may God bless you for, for that. And, uh, to the dear wife, uh, I want to say they are joining the biggest club in the world of the people called widows. I think they're the biggest club in this world. In fact, they're greater than the ANC if they're still great. Yes. Uh, yes. So it's, it's not your own experience. It's the experience of most women are, are, are around you. Which is a terrible situation. Uh, yeah, um, may God continue to comfort, console, and be with you and make you experience His presence. 
uh, in, in your life. Yes. And let me read a, a reading. That's a scripture reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the, the lesson. Uh, now, I, I would love to call upon Luke Chapman um, Kwenyana, to, to give us the obituary. Um, Kwenyana is a, a person that is most loved in families. I'll take that. <laughs> take it. Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Luke. I am Mark's father-in-law, son-in-law. <laughs> uh, I belong to Kerry, so I'm one of the lucky Holbrook men. Uh, let me just find, I need to read that. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're winning. We're winning, guys. So the this obituary was um, prepared by Uncle Tony, Mark's brother, and it just puts together a bit of a timeline um, and some some fond memories of Mark that Tony shared. So I'm going to read it for for him and for everyone today. Obituary for my but Mark. What a man! He was a brother, husband, a father, a grandfather, and a good friend to everyone who knew him. His energy level was 24-7. Mark was three years younger than me, and you could see when he was running out of steam, all he needed was a cold snack or beer uh, and something to eat. Then his batteries were recharged for the next exercise. Don't get me wrong, he sometimes could get very angry, and when he did, you steered clear of Mark until he cooled down. As a young boy, Mark got up to a lot of mischief like taking our mom's mini minor for a drive with, uh, with our younger brother, Les. On their return, the brakes had failed. And when they tried to park the car back in the garage, which was below road level, they sadly knocked down the wall, which was with, between the garage and the domestic helper's room. Between Mark and Les, they managed to rebuild the wall before dinner time, and mom and dad were none the wiser, until many years later, he told them what happened. The domestic helper also never noticed the newly bricked up wall or else she chose not to say anything. Mark and Les also took my Triumph uh, Herald uh, without my permission for a joyride and this time fate intervened and the diff broke and they were stranded until they could get a hold of me. Needless to say, I was not very impressed. Traveling through Mark's life with Glenda and then later the three girls was pure pleasure. Mark started work in the shipping industry, and boy, did he work hard. He further moved to Durban, working for Unicorn Lines, where through hard work and determination, became a director. He then moved to Port Elizabeth, and then on to Cape Town, and returned back to Durban. Mark was an excellent family man, although his love for sports saw him being late for his own wedding, due to playing a very important game of soccer match on that day. Mark was an awesome sportsman, well, I managed to get up on one leg whilst he was water skiing before he did. He was not impressed that I could do this before him. Anyway, moving on to our squash days, Mark and I were pretty skilled and had many good games against each other. Mark played pro soccer for East London United 
and eventually Durban City, where he captained the, under coach Clive Barker. Mark and Glenda eventually moved uh, from a flat to Yellowwood Park, where they still live today. Mark, my but I never thought you would go before me. I'm going to miss you terribly, but I know you're in a better place now, free from pain and drugs. Rest in peace, Mark. You will be sorely missed. Thanks, Uncle Tony. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 yeah, yes, uh, look, that it's excellent to hear. You know, it reminds me of a, a, a man who said to his wife, a man was a millionaire, and he said to his wife, when I die, we throw all my money from the banks and put it into my grave. Then a day before the funeral, uh, the wife, poor wife was in and out banks, you know, withdrawing all the money, and which uh, came to about 46 million, and then uh, put that into the envelope or to the, you know, the bank bag, Kakish one, and then went to, to her home. And when the coffin went down, shh, and then she, she went there, and then something shh, inside, and then it was buried, and yeah. That was the end of the funeral. Two days later, a friend of the poor widow went to her. Really? You foolish woman. Foolish woman. Did you really bury the money with your husband? They said, oh, yes. My husband loved his money. I had to. But I, had, I made him a check and kept, and kept, the, kept the change, the cash. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, yeah, that, that, that's that's different from 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 this one. Uh, yeah, yes, that. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, can we all stand and pray the Lord's prayer? I think I. Think I... Is is it today in the in the pro is there in the programs? Um, Oh boy, my! I've, I do have, but it's missing someone <laughs> at, at the back of the uh, program. Can we all pray our Lord's prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, let's be seated. I, I, I used to get angry when people say, if you want to hide anything from a, a black person, write it down and give it to him in writing. That you, that you won't read it. So I did. <laughs> so, which is what I'm doing today. Yes. Yes. Can I, I have the eulogy from the uh, family? Lauren will lead us on that. Uh, Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren. My dad's middle daughter or favorite daughter. <laughs> so I'm going to read um, a, a note from my mom, and then Shell's going to read hers. I'll read mine and Kez. So we'll get through this together. So this is from my mom. We laughed, we loved, we lived, and cried unashamedly. My protector, my mentor, my absolute everything. Never complaining and always happy to cherish all our needs. Our girls were your greatest achievement, whom you guided and protected with such pride. And then your 10 grandchildren. Followed. And A crocodile story. Our journey together was filled with so many precious times. Some good, 
some challenging. But we eventually conquered and survived 49 wonderfully exciting years. You always told me how much you loved me. My Marquis, there will never be another you, my everything, my all. I could have wanted in life. We cherished every moment together and tried so hard to overcome this awful disease which you sadly succumbed to. I will love you for eternity and know you will protect me always by guiding me on the right path. Please save me a little space in heaven so I can hold your hand and feel protected. Rest well, my love. You are now pain-free after a long, hard battle. You are my star up above that will forever shine your glenny. Morning, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle, and I'm Mark's eldest daughter. For those of you that don't know me, I'd like to thank you for coming out today to join our family and celebrating and honoring my dad. My dad was truly the most incredible father any dad could ask for. He was the most loving, strong, and kind husband, an amazing grandfather, and I'm eternally grateful to Heavenly Father that I was blessed with him. He instilled in each of us a belief in ourselves that allowed us to always feel assured in any arena, a belief that we could do anything we set our minds to. He loved us with all of his heart, and he gave us a safe and solid home that we never felt scared to move from that platform as we knew where we would land if we failed. He encouraged us to follow our dreams, always stating Thought creates energy, and energy creates motion. Speak it, believe it. You have a dream, set it in motion. And it are those words that have never held us back from any challenge, dream, or aspiration. There are so many beautiful, incredible memories to mention, but I'd like to touch on a few that summarize my dad and the different facets of his role as a dad, a granddad, and a husband. One of the most poignant moments between myself and my dad is a memory that has truly been the base for my decision making and especially in my role as a mom guiding my children. I had just finished matric and into my second year of a business degree, I wasn't sure what profession I wanted to go into, but I knew a business study would put me in good stead. However, I was restless and really not enjoying the studies. It was afternoon and I remember dad was cooking I approached him in the kitchen, asked if we could talk, and he stopped everything as we walked outside. It was a gorgeous day, and I explained how I felt and I wanted to travel. I wanted to go to London and see the world, and I remember how he looked at me with such love and earnest while I spoke. And he smiled at me and he said, Shell, I can see you've given this a lot of thought and consideration. If that's what you would like to do, I'll make it happen for you. And within five weeks, I was in London and have never looked back or regretted my decision. Needless to say, I had committed to finishing my studies abroad, and those textbooks had more Voyager miles than most as they followed me around the world. <laughs> and that really how dad was with us girls. He taught us patience in making huge decisions, assessing options, removing emotion, and to preempt all outcomes. He never forced our decisions. He allowed us to make them with gentle guidance from him, and he only offered his advice when asked. Lauren and myself both had a stint living at home with mom and dad when our boys were babies and demanding babies I may add, Cade. Being young moms alone without a partner around was both demanding and exhausting, and there were many nights where we would be up after midnight feeding and trying to put them down absolutely exhausted and sometimes in quiet tears and there would be a knock at the door and he would take them out the room so we could sleep and he would rock them and care for them till they slept and then quietly put them back in the cot while we got some sleep and he was always there for us and every action filled with such love <sighs> we all have very fond memories of our joe big days cares moved up after his studies and we were all at some point living in Joburg and our parents in Durban. 
and a typical weekend when mom and dad came up to see I would see them arriving with the Fenta trailer crammed with luggage and goodies and bags and bags of mom's crochet and sewing projects and the hugest cooler box stocked with meat. They'd be met in the driveway with all their grandkids swarming around the car waiting to get hugs, loves and kisses. The first night always went down with a bang. Wine flowed, music played, kids running around and many, many laughs. Towards the end of our time there, Saturday mornings were always an early start and a race to the side of a sports field. And my dad cherished the moments he could stand on the side of the field and watch his grandkids play. He was incredibly proud, often choking back tears, screaming at the ref, and being the first one at their side if they got hurt. He was always the one in the kitchen making them snacks and food and his famous toast of cheese, as the kids would call them when they were young. I'd often wake up and Sienna and Taylor would be already snug in his bed and he'd be reading them a story while we all slept in. All my children consider my dad both a mentor and someone they admire, respect and aspire to. I'm really sorry that they couldn't be here today, but I know they're watching with all their love and their intent. Just know that Grandpa loves you, he'll always love you, and you will always be part of his greatest achievements. He has left a legacy through you all, and he cannot wait for you all to play it out. He loves you, he will continue to guide you, Always look and listen for him. To my mom, you are my hero. You haven't always been dad's best friend. His only true love and his hugest support. Thank you for caring for him like you did. You were so courageous, selfless and kind. There was no stone unturned in how you loved and cared for him till the end. I'm sorry he has left us, mom. I don't know how much you loved him and how much you're going to miss him. We will never leave your side. And as we promised Dad, as we said goodbye, we will look after you and love you in the same way he did, always with admiration, always with kindness, and always with so much love and support. To my dad, I'm going to miss you so much. Thank you for raising us with all the skills we need to live wholesome and successful lives with values that we will continue through to our families. We know you are watching over us and have guided us this week, surrounded us with love and comfort. We will look for you every day and take solace knowing that heaven has gained the most perfect angel that will watch over us always. I love you, Dad. Looking around this room today and seeing how so many of you took the time to come through, especially on a Friday, to celebrate my dad, is testimony to the incredible man that he was and the countless lives that he positively impacted. Thank you for coming to celebrate with us. I know so many of you come from far, um, traveling hours and hours, um, Razi, a day and a half traveling to actually get here. So thank you for all being here. How blessed am I that we have such a close family, that we openly say and share how we feel. And I honestly have a peaceful heart, knowing my dad knew how proud I was to be his daughter, how much I loved him, and how he was my rock and my mentor. I always lived by the motto, actions speak louder than words. I am pretty loud, but sometimes actions speak louder than words. And this was the synopsis of my dad, a man of integrity, pride, accountability, hardworking, unwavering love and commitment to his family. Very, very similar traits to my eldest son, Kate. Talking to accountability, I recall a time when we were kids and we were caught throwing stones into our neighbor's pool. He was not happy about it. Without hesitation, he walked us over to the front door to apologize to the neighbors. And this was my dad throughout our life. He never sent us alone. He walked with us, supporting us and encouraging us, even if we made bad choices. 
Another story which comes to mind is when I was singing in the school choir at the Civic Center. <laughs> Only for me to look around in the crowd, there he was snoring his head off. <laughs> but he was there. And now that I think about it, every time I sang to my kids as babies, it had the same effect. So either I've got an incredibly soothing voice or the agony is so bad, sleep is the only way to escape it. Growing up, we had one tagline, which my dad would always remind us. And those grew up with us and my beautiful friends at the back there. They would often chant it to me in my dad's absence. And that was, he would say, remember one thing. You're a Holbrook. And as a blessing to my dad, my sisters, my mom, Kate and I, we actually all went and got a tattoo of my dad's signature on our arms, remembering that we're always a Holbrook. And I recall the first test of being a Holbrook. I came, up, came home upset from school, in primary school, and I said to my dad, all the kids are teasing me. So he said, Why? I said, because they're saying Holbrook, Holbrook, holes in your brooks. And I was devastated. <laughs> my dad said very calmly to me, he looked at me and said, well, yes, of course. I said, well, what do you mean, well, yes, of course? He said, how else are you going to get your legs through if you don't have holes? <laughs> Needless to say, I went back to school the next day and corrected all of them. <laughs> Dad, you were the proudest part to your 10 grandkids. You loved them for their unique personalities and abilities, always supporting them at their chosen sport and bragging to anybody that would listen. The boys' fondest memories of you never tiring whilst playing soccer with them well into the night. When Cade was born, as Shell said, you never, ever left my side. Many times staying up all through the night, pushing Cade up and down in his pram. He was not a sleeper. So we were so blessed to have Dad by our side. When my now husband Graham asked me if he could marry me, he was so nervous. But not because he thought I was going to say no, but because he knew what I was worth to Dad. Mom, you reinvented the marital promise of in sickness and in health. Dad didn't want for anything when he had you by his side. Thank you for always taking such good, incredible care of Dad and doing so with a laugh. Your unbelievable faith and strength is what carried Dad through and seeing your love for each other grow stronger and stronger every day. Dad, living in a house of females, we always used to tease you, saying it's not about you when we wanted the limelight. Well, now it's your turn. It is your turn to suffer no more but to rejoice. Sit back and watch your hard work and selfless sacrifices come to the fruition in the form of mum, us girls, and your 10 amazing grandkids. Death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. Dad, you've got this, and we've got mum. Your guiding hand on my shoulder will remain with me forever. I love you more than you know. And in memory of my dad, can I encourage you all, please, being the selfless man that he was, can I encourage you to go and do a random act of kindness in his honor? Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kerry. I'm the third born. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. To my dearest dad, I never thought this goodbye would ever come. Before we part, I need everyone here to know just what a phenomenal job you did at parenting. Like everything you did in life, you gave 110%. I was the youngest, but you put in as much effort with me as you did with Lauren and Michelle. Thank you, dad. Thank you for waking up at 4.30 in the morning, five days a week, seven years to get me to swimming training. Thank you for the best pep talks before each race. And you were the one who got me through the 200 meter breaststroke race in Bloemfontein. Mrs. B, do you remember that? I collapsed into your arms at the end and was the safest I ever felt. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for our garden. Thank you for our childhood home. I loved our Saturdays spent with you in the garden, me in the pool, 
and mom arriving home from shops with treats. Thank you, dad. Thank you for my school lunches. So much passion was put into each lunch you made. Your ham, lettuce, tomato, and cheese sandwiches always hit the spot. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for encouraging me and accepting me. You accepted that drama was my passion, and once again, you put in 110%. You were there for 14 out of the 16 productions that I did in Joburg. <laughs> Building sets, feeding my staff, cheering me on from backstage as I went to do opening speeches. Productions have never been the same since you and Mom have not been there. Your silent partnership in my business allowed me to do my passion every single day. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for our holidays. You, Mom, Luki, Sammy, Evie, and I toured South Africa. I wish Hannah could have experienced at least one holiday with her grandpa. We laughed and we laughed and we laughed. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for your fight against cancer. It was so hard and it was so painful, but you were determined. Witnessing you fighting to live was incredible. You wanted to live and I really love that. You never gave up. I'm going to fulfill all the goals we set out to do for 2024. 10 park runs, a bike ride on the beachfront, 50 sit-ups and 30 push-ups. Thank you for these goals. Thank you for being the most incredible grandpa to my children. You were the best, you were the best, and charades is never going to be the same without you. Lastly, thank you for waiting for mom, Lauren, Michelle, and I before you passed. The love I felt in the room when, we went, when you went to be with Jesus was the epitome of you and your family. You blessed us. You are so loved, Daddy. I'm going to miss your firm hand on my neck as we walked and your whistle that told us you were near. We will meet again, but until then, I need you to know that I was blessed here on earth with a dad that was perfect for me. I am who I am today and a better version of myself because you were my father. Thank you. Right. It's going to be a bit embarrassing when the big guy cries more than the three girls, but we'll give it a go. Um, I don't think it was a secret.
No, I switched to this other one. She'll be fine now. to celebrate his 70th. Um, we weren't able to do it on the actual day, so we put a little party together and we had a 70th celebration for Mark, which was cool. Um, I prepared a little speech that I said then, and afterwards he asked me to email it to him. So I'm, I'm actually just going to read that. I did it like a Facebook tribute earlier this week, and I was going to read that, but Kerry said, no, you can't read a Facebook post. And everyone's on Facebook anyway, they've probably read it, so you have to do something else. Um, so, <laughs> so, if you haven't read it on Facebook, I found it. Um, so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, today we gather to celebrate. I've, I've tweaked it a little bit to celebrate a truly remarkable man, a man who I call my father in law, Mark. On the special occasion of his 70th birthday, the day that we say goodbye now, I wanted to say a few words about the person we all admire and love dearly. Mark was not only he, only reached, he not only reached the impressive age of 70, but he has done so with grace, wisdom, heart, full of kindness, and like Sam said, really, he has great calves. <laughs> His life has been a testament to the values of hard work, perseverance, and unwavering commitment to family. Throughout his journey, he not only built a successful career, but also nurtured a loving family. His dedication as a father, grandfather, husband, and son 
and a friend to me, a truly an example to us all. His guidance, support, and sense of humor have enriched our lives in countless ways. Um, I'm pretty bad with dad jokes, but Mark was like, he was my biggest fan. I could drop the worst dad joke in the world, and he laughed his head off. He loved it. Um, <laughs> Let us always, as we celebrate today, let us remember the stories that we all shared, the lessons that he taught us, the value that he brought to our lives. As we look forward to honoring your legacy, let us express our gratitude and privilege of having had him in our lives. Until we meet again, Mark. Cheers. But he replied, I sent that to him on email. Um, after I said the speech at his birthday, he said, Luke, please will email that to me after we got through our tears and all that good stuff. So he replied to my email, um, which I'd like to read as well. Thank you, Luki. Such awesome words for which I'm truly thankful. And from my heart with such appreciation and love, which are true treasures in life when one starts getting on. They make me proud and realize how blessed I am to have such a beautiful family around me. Thank you again and God bless. That mark, which just says to me that he knew, um, guys, he knew how much you went to him. Got it in right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to read a message from my husband, Freddie, to, to our family. I'd like to send my sincere condolences during these difficult times to Glenda, Michelle, Lauren, and Kez, and all the grandkids and son in laws. I can only imagine the heartache you're all going through in your own, my friends. Mark, you are such an amazing, kind hearted man. Anyone that met him loved him so much. He loved his family with all his heart, and he would do anything for all of us, no matter what. His generosity was out of this world and he had so much compassion for anyone. He also had a great sense of humor and would make us all laugh so much. He was more than my father-in-law, he was my friend, my mate, and I will miss him terribly. He fought his battles so hard and with so much courage and I will miss him terribly. He was an inspiration to all of us. Rest in peace and good luck, my friend. Sorry, we've got so many speeches. <laughs> so I'm going to read a message on behalf of my husband Graham, who couldn't be here today. Mark, words seem inadequate to express the seemingly endless void your departure has left in our hearts. Your presence was a fortress of strength and inspiration, not just to me, but to all who had the privilege of being in your orbit. You were the epitome of leadership teaching by example and instilling in us the values of quiet strength and dignified resolve. Your journey from the soccer fields to the military and through every chapter of your career was marked by your unwavering ability to lead with integrity and bring out the best from those around you. You were the patriarch in the truest sense. Your love, dedication and commitment to your family are the pillars upon which we will build our future generations. The distance to Annual Christmas holidays down to Durban will always remain etched in my mind. The laughter-filled nights on the patty, the sneaky beers in the caravan, and the joy that filled every moment in our reluctant farewells. The void left by your absence is immeasurable, a testament to the indelible mark you've made in our lives. Now through every challenge, you stood resolute, a beacon of principle and grace. Now it's time for you to find peace free from the pain and trials of this world. Your legacy endures in the countless ways you've touched our lives. I'm eternally grateful for the wisdom you imparted and the better person I've become through knowing you. Your memory will be forever and a guiding light in our journey forward. I miss you dearly, Graham, your son-in-law. And for my two kids that couldn't make it that are in Australia, they said to Pa, we miss you so much. Thank you for always playing sport with us. Even though 
you didn't go easy on us, and you always beat us with your skills. You still took the time to teach us how to do those skills and encouraged us regardless. We love you and we miss you, Tom. Razi's letter to my dad. Greetings. I'm not good with words, so I'm going to keep it short. Many of you may not know me. I'm Ryan, popularly known as Razi. I grew up in the Holbrook household. I consider myself very blessed. I gained two families. I lost my father at a very young age, and Grandpa was more than just a guardian to me, but a father figure. He had a very strong aura. He wouldn't need to say a word as he walked in the room. You could just feel his presence. We truly lost a soldier. I will miss him. I will continue to pray, not just for him, but for the loved ones he left behind. We have gained an angel. Rest now, you have served your purpose. I love you. We all love you. From Razi. From Debbie, Glenda's sister, Mark's sister-in-law. Mark was a beloved husband to my sister Glenda, father to my lovely nieces, Michelle, Lauren, and Kerry, and grandfather to a horde of grandkids. <laughs> we all love him more than words can say. He and Glenda met at a young age and we just meant for each other on the trampoline. <laughs> I'm sure Glenda has fond memories of Oh there we go, sorry, Debs, I jumped again. I'm sure Glenda has fond memories of Billy Van Furen's trampoline <laughs> at the Vincent United Clubhouse for Mark's early soccer days. <laughs> Mark was a true inspiration and had found this love for his family. I can never repay him for the impact that he had on my life personally and that of my family's lives that changed us forever. Marky, my brother, you will be forever loved and missed. Rest in peace, free from pain, until we meet again in God's heavenly presence. Love you, Debbie. Debbie's letter. From Craig, Ashton, and Robin my dad's nieces and nephews. The day the Lord called your name, it shattered our hearts. But heaven needed an angel, and the one that was picked was you. We just wish we had more time together. We will miss you every day. As time goes by, we will never forget how you loved us all. May the winds of love blow softly and whisper in all the ears of those you loved. <laughs> Until we see your smile again, we hold you in our hearts and mind forever and always. Let Craig, Ashton, and Robin. Is there anyone from the floor that would like to say something? Yes, come up. Can we now use this one? Here I am, the tallest member of the community here. Please <laughs> uh, don't stand up when I go past or anything like that. Now, I had the pleasure of knowing Mark uh, from when he came up from East London and worked for us in risk management at Unicorn. <clears throat> Mark was a had a, a nickname as you all know hot foot hot foot larry was football wizard and he was i'm not being really correcting him in the least but he was also a role model to our two boys and that stage i think they were around about six or something and eight uh, and they always wanted to go and see uncle mark playing football great news one day the match was going to be televised. And these guys literally they couldn't wait for the television to warm up for they're sitting watching. Where's Uncle Mark? Where's Uncle Mark? Where's Uncle Mark? Uh, he's the main man in this. I think he was a center forward or whatever. You have that there you have to acknowledge him. It's quite a key position. And you really are supposed to be very good at your job because I believe that you can't kick the ball out there doing proper sport and dive over the line. You've got to kick it accurately. <laughs> 
I used to play football, but not very really often. So here we are. Imagine the scene. Hot foot comes on, and he's in and out like a belly lightning bolt through the crowd. Even I was saying, well done, boy, well done. Uh, the next thing, Mark zooms through this mob of defense, lines up, he diddles the old goalkeeper, if that's what you call him, and let's dry it. Now, I've always been told, keep your head down, watch the ball and whatever, and follow it through. So I don't play football very well, but that's beside the point. Hot, hot foot, let's drive. Bang! <laughs> Over the top of the crossbar. <laughs> like, what, is it? What, what are you doing? <laughs> he was just practicing something. <laughs> but there's only one other story with, with which I shall bore you, and it's this. Mark was handling claims in the risk management department, and there was a big mess up in uh, Mozambique, there's the war going on up there. And massive claims were coming through for non-delivery of cargo, etc. And it was all uh, uh, um, being investigated by the agents, our agents up there. We were then, I got a call from one of the, one of the uh, senior people, one of the directors, and said, listen, can you go and have a, a, a a look at what's going on up in Byron in particular. Uh, so we duly uh, got, got a, a, up there, that, and I can't even remember how we actually, but we chartered a plane or something, because in those days, uh, that was still in the wake for the aftermath of the war, and scheduled flights weren't going. So we get up to Byron and checked into the Don Carlos Hotel, you know, which was absolutely an excellent place, I'm being quite serious. It, it was at the raggedy end of uh, the run out and the wearing out phase that uh, the country went through. But they tried. Uh, even the Napier on the dining room tables were carefully uh, darned and things like that. I think that's the right word, isn't it? Fix it. Lady, lady speech, that is. Um, so we had only one problem. The mid, this was midsummer, and it gets a tad warm up in Barra at that stage. So secondly, there were no uh, elevators, so you walked up. Um, and thirdly, the air conditioning wasn't working. So, joy of joys, there comes a part, part of the. We had dinner downstairs, and naturally didn't absorb any alcoholic. <laughs> I see why I'm so shrinking for the knives. <laughs> we get it to the stage of bedtime, and we've only got one room, but we've both been in the army, so we were quite uh, not concerned about that sort of thing. And it was time to in the bed, about 10 seconds, because the temperature in that room must have been about 90 degrees. It was unbelievably hot. We landed up with uh, Mark lying on the floor because it was the coolest place you could find. And that's where he got a name which not many of you know about nickname, which was Cool Head Holbrook. <laughs> and why Cool Head Holbrook when he's kicked the ball over the belly crossbar? It's quite simple because innovative man as he was, he said, hang on a second, we've got a fridge here. And he opened the fridge, put his head inside, and went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so there were funny moments on this thing, which finished off because I'm boring you now. Um, it was um, coming back from some flight or other. We got to Maputo, and uh, it must be, we, it was on a scheduled flight back via Johannesburg. We don't speak Portuguese, my Portuguese is about as good as my Swahili. But um, he, we were called, but they could have spoken weak ones, plane up there, wings, all okay, not been stolen, and waited. And eventually they came on in broken, in broken English and said, um, would the two passengers who are delaying the flight so and so to Johannesburg please board immediately? Us? 
to the door, check in, hand the tickets, hand the, the tickets, there's the plane, Bigel was sort of winding up the engines and things and I don't know what they call it. And uh, off we go. So we thought, well, um, we better run because the plane's about 150 yards down the track. Down the track. And of course, I do that in around about seven seconds when I'm going slowly. <laughs> so we, we go and we headed off. We were, we were running, being serious, we were running. And both of us almost simultaneously re remembered what we were told in the army. If you're in any likelihood of being under fire, <clears throat> don't run in a straight line. <laughs> don't. <clears throat> um, so here we are, herring down bags and all the rest of it. And we both started this sort of, <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, Battle of Britain, here we go. <laughs> so fine, this all came to the end, this, this lady at the top of the stairs. I shall up there, and, in, and Mark, Mark was grimac grimacing a bit. And he was grimacing a bit because I only subsequently found that that previous evening we had some prawns. Now, well, he had prawns. And I said to him, listen, buddy, understand this. You never know which one's going to cause abdominal difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> abdominal difficulties. And he streamed up the, up the stairs. And he was clenching certain parts of his body at that stage. We got down and sat down, got to them, or got to Janusburg without any problems. But he didn't pitch for work the following day. Then <laughs> found up and said, Mike is indisposed. <laughs> in the po or indisposed? <laughs> no, indisposed? So I have fond memories of him. And that one thing I will never forget Mike for, and that was, I was under attack by poisonous little walk from the part of the group. Uh, who had knives on to me. Now, I don't give a fiddler's what's it uh, becomes that sort of thing. I can fight battles. He, Mark Holbrook was the only guy, bar one other, the only guy that stood behind me and covered my back. And that, to me, took me five months. Thank So we had a group called Red Payers uh, Association on behalf of them. I just want to make a speech for Mark. Uh, it sounds like this is very hard. And knowing Mark, he was such a good man. And to me, he was like a father, the older brother, a friend and a close mate. Because um, in terms of business, in terms of Red Payers as well, there's sometimes I used to go to my dog corner and just give him a call without my Red Payers knowing and us for advice. He'll give me solid advice. He'll give me a manly advice. He'll give me something to look upon and say what a great man he was. So on behalf of the family and Linda, we send our sincere condolences to you guys. And we wish you a very, very successful, successful journey ahead. Mark, well, till we meet again. And there's something I just wrote quickly. I just want to read it out. Goodbyes are not forever. Goodbyes are not the end. They simply mean I will miss you until we meet again. Love the red pairs and love the last night. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure we are we're done and let's continue. Just, just want to comment about the business people. The, the ministry of being a business person is under, not well understood, perhaps, uh, or undermined, because with that ministry, you wouldn't know how many families you feed at the end of the month, uh, especially during these days of poverty and unemployment and everything. So, so for, for that, for that ministry with Marcus and, and all those that are in business, they must always remember that they are having a wonderful ministry they are exercising to, to people at, 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 at this time. 
Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, and I was, you, you know that we were trained to talk, what was preaching in, the, in England, and during his sermon, there was a, there was a guy who was kept longer in over than me. <laughs> And everybody walked out to us in preaching. There was such one man sitting at the, at the door. And he said, oh, thank you that you're still remaining when I'm preaching, everybody has already left. And then he said, no, no, no. I'm waiting for you to finish and lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope, I hope I won't get to that. Um, I don't know. Because I don't want to use the word coincidence, why I choose to, to preach on Psalm 23 when it is also a, a, a famous psalm for Mark uh, and, for the, and for the family. And it's not coincidence, I think it's some communication that we cannot understand as human beings. I want, I want to capture on, though I walk through the veil of the shade of death. I'll fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here ends the, the lesson. In most cases, when death comes, we fear the shadow, Lord is actual faith, and we forget that a person existed in God before creation. So when we say you are, maybe the, the, the bad word we use is death. But when, when a person leaves this body, which was made of the soil, we, we, we forget that that soul that is existing in that body belongs to God. And God can take it anyway. And yes, for the plan for everyone, there is no mistake, there is no person who is born before his time is born in our time because God is the God of time. And we must accept that we mustn't fear the shadow. A person goes back to where he was before creation. And we tend to be so uh, uh, jealous when it comes to that. We don't want to lose, especially parents. Yes. Yeah. For all of us should realize that our life is hid with Christ. We gather in the letter of to the Colossians 3, verse 3. We come and our spirit is trusting. And our Savior is faithfully protecting us in everything. He leads us even in the veil of the shadow of death. He averts all evil and turns it into profit and a benefit for our use. Which is, is God who knows our needs before we ask. A veil of the, of the shade of death, it in fact, is a, is a, is a, 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 a road between Jer Jericho and Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which is very difficult to walk. The sheep walk there because there is a shepherd who is walking in front. Even if when it comes to death, Nobody has died here. We don't know how we walk when you are dead. But because the shepherd is there, and Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. So that must always prepare us that we are not here forever. We are going to live. Not like that, the rich man of, uh, that I know who said, I must want to bury the all my money. You believe everything because when you came, you came alone and you live alone, like like uh, uh, Job, uh, um, Job will say. In fact, our our God will comfort you, and uh, Glenda, our God will comfort you. Uh, the three musketeers, daughters, I suppose, <laughs> as, and, and the father and the brother-in-laws. God will be there for you. It's a pity that the, the grandsons and daughters are still so young, but they are missing the love that the grandfather can bring uh, to, to them. But must, but they must also realize that granddad has gone back to where he came from. 
That's why we will also go when we come of our, of our age. But nobody wants to go. Uh, somebody said to me, um, I think now we are, we are over 70. You can behave with God. It takes you as a no, 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 no. I love Jesus, but I don't want to see him now. <laughs> Let's make it later. Yeah. Yes, then that's how the life is. We tend to enjoy life and forget that here we came, where you came, you will also live. Yes, if we don't know where. But what we know is absent from the body, <coughs> present with the Lord. That's what uh, that's what that's, that's, that's what uh, uh, Paul, Paul says. When, 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 when David calls God a shepherd, he knows that a, a, shepherd, a sheep is something that is a bit stupid. The sheep cannot go the way to heaven, can they? <laughs> so we, we are also like that when it comes to God. We are solely dependent on his guidance that when, he, when we die, he will lead us for where we are and where he needs us to be and where he wants us to be at that particular time. We, every death has a sunshine when it comes to us because every, every death has a future. I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm convinced that here, all of spoken, you are saying deep down in you, good night. After good night, there is good morning. If we will meet. We don't know when, but we will meet. When fear knocks at your door, send faith, and he will answer. Faith, faith, faith will tell you, fear no evil, because God is always on our side. And if God is on our side, Nobody can be against us. Yeah. Um, maybe just to appeal to the, 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 the daughters. I don't know if it was in England, I don't know if it's here as well, when, when they said, um, uh, your, your son is your son until he gets married, but your daughter is your daughter until you die. So, uh, what a blessing for Mark to have daughters to look after him, even uh, looking after uh, his dear wife, Glenda. Please continue to look after her. She will be more sensitive now because of loneliness. Yes, and, 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 and especially yeah, white people together, together with the, the learned blacks, we are, we are not like the original black people who never had a, a depression, who never had a stress, because when they get into the text, they say, hi, how are you? I'm stressed. You know, my husband died 10, ten days ago and I'm alone at home. Now, these learned people right, won't say that. They, they seem to keep things on their own. Yes. Shout you. you what do you think about love? Shout when you when, 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 when you are, when you are, when you are lonely. Yes, and, 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 and it's a pity when I grew up, there used to be places for tea and scones for elderly people. That is no more anymore because I mean, we also we all need that should be there so we can go and talk about our experience of this world together because we are, we are the universities of this life. Yes. But now we don't have that anymore due to the situation we find ourselves in. Yes, don't allow boredom to kill you. Yes, and in fact, you just be, be a black woman, just take your things and visit one of the daughters. I'm here, don't make appointments. Those are my points. You might say, No, I won't be there. You just go there so that you can help somebody to. Yeah, yes. And may, may God console, comfort all of you. May God, our Father, make you experience his presence in your life. Even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, 
pray, God be with you. For those who are struggling in life, I pray earnestly that God will sustain them and God will recreate South Africa that we see going down the drain at the moment. Yeah. It, it, it's a pity. This age of, 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 of Mark is now going. Those are the age that knows this country. We speak English because of these people who are employing our fathers as garden boys and our mothers as kitchen cats. At the end of the day, they used to come with two cans of fish and, and two and three cans of beef and, and, and even with some clothes to go to school. So those kind of generation is now going. Don't allow to be self selfish. Love one another as God has loved you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with those who mourn, wife, daughters, and grandchildren, and sons in law, and those who are closely linked with Mark, that casting their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Um, at, at the moment, again, I would love to, to thank you on behalf of the family. I think I must, I must also change my surname. <laughs> on, on, on behalf of the family, I would love to thank all of you sitting here today the things that you have left undone just because you wanted to say goodbye to mark the time you have spent here it's a sacrifice of your time and your work we appreciate that in all of you and i know that we are different categories it's good in church because sometimes we are and one of the speakers Book about the, the defense force. I, I always fail to, to, to mention all the ranks before I come down to the ladies and gentlemen because there are so many. So if, even here, I say, um, with all protocol observed, it's, it's a pity the family cannot stand up and say, This one is this one, and this one is that one. But on, on their behalf, I am saying, Your presence is highly appreciated. May God. In fact, bless you for that. May he sustain you and keep you all the days of your life. For those who are in business, I pray that your businesses may flourish so that you can feed God's people as God expects us to do. Uh, I, 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 there is a nice, it's a closer word. I, I know it's not easy. Uh, that's too much. So share uh, the, the, Our country is now full of people who are all so sake. So sake meaning putting into your own pocket. Yes, you don't pay me if a person is working for you, but you just keep it to your pocket. You still give in the pension from an elderly person. That's a time we find ourselves in. And this country is full of those kind of people. May you. May God continue to make you a blessing to all of us, white and black, yellow and pink, male and female, as you, and, and as according to what God blessed you with. With thank, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, what do we have with the family? I, I know that the family is is the most person that is. Always taking the control of the of, of, of the things like this. That's a favorite of the family. Son in law. Yes. Even if your even if your daughter is, is, is right, you say you are wrong because you want 
you understand in law to be right. <laughs> yes, you are all invited uh, downstairs. I'm not sure where you put downstairs is. Yes, but I think we'll, we'll go down there and we'll find where you can have. Uh, let me put it in. This is you, 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 you will have something to wipe your mouth. You wipe your mouth downstairs or wash your hands. So we, 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 we go downstairs and um, I'm waiting for my pipe. I don't know. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's It's not. 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 I, I, I think it was a producing me. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I talk a lot. I know that Mark is you know, there's somebody who talks, talk, talks a lot. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was trained for nine nine years for talking. So, so I, 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 I talk a lot. And uh, it, it, it's an honor to me to be in a service like this. I sometimes brag about it that. I am a midwife taking a person back to God, not a, a person receiving people from God, but I'm taking people to God, I think. You always be in my prayers. I'll always pray for you. May God bless you.